these are high quality construction as you can see in the video. The very large ones that cars can drive in can actually be compared to the tube tunnels and building these tunnels today will definitely cost millions of dollars per kilometer. Let's make a quick comparison between London tube tunnels and the Gaza tunnels built by Hamas. According to Wikipedia, some London tube lines built from the 19th century to the early 20th century range from 3.5 meters to 3.7 meters in diameter. There's also larger ones like the Finsbury Park to Moorgate Terminals that are up to 4.9 meters in diameter. Of course, these tunnels are for passenger trains moving millions of people every day within and outside London. Now, compare that to the Gaza tunnels. One of the largest discovered by the IDF is this one here. It's so wide that they have some sort of articulated vehicle running inside, mostly used for evacuation of everything they excavated. In order to estimate the diameter of the tunnel, let's use this scene here where this guy is sitting. Although, going by the statements released by the IDF when this tunnel was discovered, it seems it's most likely 3.5 meters in diameter. But let's measure it anyway. This guy is a full-grown adult, maybe up to 5.5 feet to 6 feet in height. If he were to spread his arms, the span should be a little bit greater than his height. For adult males without any form of deformity, their arm span should be about 2 inches greater than their height. Yes, that's the arm span to height ratio which is usually 1 is to 1. There are exceptions though. Some people have very long arms, but the majority still conforms with the arm span to height ratio. Anyway, looking at this image, if this guy is 5.5 feet in height, or he should be more, let's say he's 5.8 feet tall, that means his arm span should be about 6 feet in length. Convert that to meters, that's about 1.8 meters. Although the angle of this frame isn't perfect, it wasn't shot from the middle of the tunnel. Nevertheless, if his right arm is stretched out, it doesn't seem like he will be able to touch the tunnel wall without leaning in. We can add his left arm to see how far it goes. Now, going by his presumed height of 1.8 meters, we still have enough space inside the tunnel. Let's add another arm to see if it will close the gap. Now, we need to determine the length of the arm. We start by checking the shoulder width of an adult male. We will subtract that and divide the rest into two. On average, the shoulder width of an adult male ranges from 45 to 50 centimeters. Let's take 50 and subtract it from 180, that would be 130. 130 divided by 2 is 65, so one arm is 65 centimeters approximately. Now 180 plus 65 equals 245 centimeters, let's just round it up to 250 because of the small space at the extreme left that his arm can't reach. So that gives us a total length of 2.5 meters. 2.5 meters is still wide enough to accommodate four people standing side by side or sitting as you can see. That brings us to their objective. The most likely reason they built this tunnel very wide was to make it accommodate more people at a time and since it's wide it became necessary to evacuate the excavated sand with the use of a vehicle. It makes their job easier and faster. It also means they wanted to build these tunnels and surrounding infrastructure very quickly. They were kind of working on a time frame or maybe it was because they felt they had a good cover. If you look at the outside where the sand is being evacuated, with this massive roof overhead, no one can see what is going on below. So maybe that's why they decided to make the tunnels wide. They used vehicles to evacuate the sand to make their job easier and faster, unlike in built-up areas of the city where they don't have the liberty to install a massive roof or canopy to hide what is going on beneath. Ultimately, considering the proximity of this wide tunnel to the border crossing with Israel and the fact that it is wide enough for a vehicle to drive in, it looks like it was purposely built for a massive invasion. One more thing to test, can a London tube train run inside a Hamas-built tunnel? It doesn't look likely. 
Anyway, the essence of doing all these comparisons is to show that these guys put in a lot of effort to build these tunnels. Not just the energy, a lot of money went into the construction. Considering that the tunnels run into hundreds of kilometers, we are talking about billions of dollars spent on something that doesn't add value to their economy. Unlike in London, where the tunnels move millions of people every day, it contributes greatly to their economy because it enhances the people's mobility. Imagine what the millions of dollars wasted in building these tunnels could have been used to achieve. Projects that would have added more value to their economy. What a huge waste. In another video, we will analyze where they got the millions of dollars they invested in the construction of these tunnels. Thanks for watching. <laughs>